I am back today with another fabulous math video. I know you're going to be so excited. This section is section 3.3. It's called Linearity and Continuity of Graphs. The good news is the hardest part of this whole unit is saying it, not doing it. So let's get this party started. There are two things you're going to be asked to do in this section. The first one is to determine if a graph is discrete, continuous, or neither. So all the graphs in this section will either be discrete. That means, like this one is discrete because it's just a bunch of points that don't connect to each other. That's why we call it discrete. Um, it can be, it's continuous if it forms a line or a curve or a couple of curves even. Some of these have more than one curve. Um, they also consider it continuous if you have a V-shape, if it has a, a definite bend in it, they, they call that a curve. Um, this one, I have a little meme for you here. Why is, I always said it, why is six afraid of seven, seven, eight, nine, you know. I thought the graphic was pretty cute on it though. That was pretty fun. All right, so the first thing you have to tell me is, is it discrete? continuous or neither. That's the only three options, okay? The second part of 3-3, you will have to determine if a function is linear or nonlinear. Linear means it makes a straight line. Nonlinear makes it means it doesn't, okay? Those are your goals. Okay, how do you count cows with a calculator? <laughs> okay, so example one, determine continuity, okay? Is it continuous or is it discrete, okay? The bargain book barn sells young adult novels on a sliding scale. That is, the more books you buy, the cheaper they are. Let f of x model the store's prices for given quantities. Is f of x discrete or continuous? Explain your reasoning. This one, sorry about the interruption, Miss Pinto came in. Okay, I was reading this problem to you, and um, we get down to a point here. Uh, the uh, PDF they gave us didn't have all this, so I had to type this in from the book. Uh, let's see, I use the table in the context of the situation. The quantity and price correspond to order pairs. Basically, what they're saying is you can't sell half a book. You can't sell a third of a book. You can sell one book or two books, but there's no in-between books, okay? So um, this is going to be a discrete graph, and you can tell that just by looking at this graph, okay? Next page. Okay, so the example two is on page 158. Determine whether f of x and g of x are continuous, discrete, or neither. Those are your choices. Um, a would be continuous because all of the points are connected by a line. It doesn't matter that it's curvy, it's still all connected, okay? Because f of x is graphed with a single curve, it is a continuous function. The domain and range are both all real numbers. So that means that x is all real numbers and y is all real numbers. And you know that this continues on because of the arrows. On example b, g of x, this it is it's neither. These parts are continuous, but the whole thing has to be continuous for it to be continuous. So it does have continuous sections, and it has discrete sections. But we will have to call this neither because, I don't know, how do you say it? Do you say neither or neither? Um, because g of x has continuous sections, but it is not a single line or curve. It is neither discrete nor continuous. The domain and range are intervals of values. I hope this videotape isn't extremely choppy. There is a lot going on here today. It's Wednesday, you know, your no Zoom Wednesday, and I'm trying to film this lesson, but people keep coming in my room and calling me. <laughs> okay, so determine whether f of x is discrete, continuous, or neither. Well, I think you're getting the idea that when you see a lot of dots and they're not connected, it is discrete. Whip out my handy dandy pen. All right. And discrete is E T E. Five out of four people struggle with math. <laughs> I think I have a t shirt that says that. Um, apply discrete and continuous functions. 
As a private investigator, Tia charges $25 per hour for any amount of time up to eight hours, and then a flat rate of $250 per day. Use the graph to determine if the function that models this situation is discrete, continuous, or neither. Well, they've got a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of paragraph here, but I can tell you right now, just looking at that graph, it's neither. It has a continuous section and it has a discrete section. But because the whole graph doesn't do one or the other, it's going to be a neither. Um, the function is not made up entirely of individual points, so it's not discrete. It cannot be drawn with a straight line or a smooth curve. So the function is neither, neither continuous nor discrete. So here we have a little warning for you. Continuous intervals. Recall that a function can have continuous have a continuous interval, but the function itself is not continuous unless it is continuous over the entire domain. So you can have continuous pieces, but you will not say this function is continuous unless the entire thing is continuous. If you've got these little dots, that makes it a neither or a neither. Or nope. Circadian rhythms are cycles of behavior that occur over 24 hours based on a day-night day, day -night cycle. One aspect of a plant's circadian rhythm is the percentage of its flowers that are open or closed. If f of x is represented by the curve, then is f of x discrete, continuous, or neither neither? <laughs> well, I already have the answer written here. I don't have to write it. This is continuous because all the points are connected by this curved line. So far, so easy, right? Well, the other thing we we're going to ask you to do in this section is tell if something's linear or nonlinear. Now, if you're looking at a graph, if it's a straight line, it's linear. If it's a curved line, it's nonlinear. All right. But there are lots of ways to represent linear equations or nonlinear equations, and they won't all be graphs. All right. This says a lot. I'm not crazy about this. I do understand the importance of simplifying an equation if you're being asked if it's linear or nonlinear. Um, I understand their point that a, a linear function can be written in the form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are integers and not zero. If a is greater than or equal to one. Um, yeah, I, I get that. Um, yeah, um, but then it gets weird. Then they say, okay, then you have to change it into this AX plus B, write it like, ooh, yeah. Let's, let me just show you how I want you to do these. Some of this stuff that we complicate so badly. All right, so they've given us this equation, Y equals 4X squared minus 2X squared plus 3X minus 5. Okay, your basic linear equation when written in slope-intercept form is in the form y equals mx plus b. If you can get your equation into this format and y and x are both raised to the first power, you got yourself a line, okay? Um, if you have only y or only x and they're to the first power, you've got yourself a line. Um, this has to be simplified, though, because it, you cannot have second powers and have a line. These will make a parabola second, to the second power. But because this is not simplified, we're not sure yet. All right. So when we look at this, if we were to go ahead and simplify this term here, this becomes 4x squared, which will then give us 4x squared minus 4x squared plus 3x minus 5. Oh, I forgot the y equals. But you see what's going to happen? These x squareds cancel each other out. So that leaves us with y equals 3x minus 5, which is your standard linear equation. Okay? This is a straight line. x and y are both to the first power. Okay? Um, that's, how, that's how you tell if it's a line. You look to make sure x and y are both to the positive 1 power. Okay? They make it a little harder. Okay? They, first of all, want you to distribute this and get that this is 4x squared. Okay, and then they show that you add these two together and they become zero. All right, and they didn't write the y's over here. 
um, and then we get y equals 3x plus, uh, minus 5. Then they say you have to write it in the form ax plus by equals c, which I'm sorry, I don't think you have to. If you can get it into this form and y and x are both to the first power, you're good to go as a line, right? But if we're going to write it the way they want us to, all right, we have to get this 3x over to the left. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And then we would have y minus 3x equals negative 5, but we have to rearrange these. And the term in front of x has to be positive in this form. So we would then have to multiply everything by negative 1, and we end up with 3x minus y equals 5. I'm not going to make you do this part. Just get it into slope-intercept form. Check to make sure that x and y both are to the first power. You've got a line. That's all you need to do. Okay. Two math for dummies at $16.99 each. That'll be $50. <laughs> okay, so they've given us another function here. But we need to simplify this to figure out if we can get it into y equals mx plus b form. All right, y equals mx plus b. This is by far the most useful form of a line. So this is 3x squared, which right away sets up red alerts for us because we know that anytime you have a variable raised to the second power, you're going to end up with a parabola, okay? If the x is squared, the parabola will point one way, and if the y is squared, it points another way. Both make parabolas, though. Okay, so what is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. x squared minus y equals 17. Well, 3x squared minus 3x squared those wipe each other out, and we get negative y equals 17. We can't have a negative y, so we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1, which gives us y equals negative 17. Well, let's think about what kind of a graph this would be. Is it linear or nonlinear? Well, which one of these axes is y? Okay, this one's y, and this one's x. Where is y negative 17? Oh, well, somewhere down here. Where else is y negative 17? Well, wouldn't this be 1 negative 17? And wouldn't this be negative 1 negative 17? So this actually gives us a horizontal line at y equals negative 17. Is that a line? Heck yes, it is. But we knew it was going to be because y was to the first power. We don't have to have a y and an x. If we have a y, we have a horizontal line. If we have just x, we have a vertical line. Both are lines. Okay, so here they've given us another function and given us a whole bunch of junk that we, nobody really wants to look at. Oh, no. Um, here, let's see, what can we do to simplify this? We could combine these like terms. We have 3x to the third minus x to the third. That would give us 2x to the third plus 3x plus 6. Now, right now, I'm telling you this is not a line because there's no way to get rid of this x to the third, and you cannot have x raised to any power other than one and have a line. So this is not a line. But they want you to try to write it in uh, ax plus by equals c. All right, whatever. So they want you to subtract, are they doing this in two steps? At one step. Subtract 2x to the third and 3x from both sides minus 2x to the third, minus 3x from both sides, and then you get, this is 6, and you cannot have a negative coefficient on the x, that's against the math rules, so you have to multiply everything by negative 1 and put the x highest power first, that's what they've done here, and I would never ask you to do this step, so basically you come to the conclusion um, that it is not in the proper form, and therefore it is nonlinear. On linear. Okay, so here's another one for us. Uh, the function 4x minus, uh, we got to get rid of this exponent thing here. Oh, do I need to read this first? I'm sorry. Of all the things I learned in grade school, trying to avoid cooties was the last one I expected to use. <laughs> oh, we should have been avoiding those cooties better than we were. <laughs> we wouldn't all be at home right now. 4x, okay, this uh, 2 distributes to both of these. This will give us minus 4y squared equals 3. Right now, I can tell you this is not a line. If we put it in y equals mx plus b format, we would have to subtract 4x from both sides. 
That gives us negative 4y squared equals negative 4x minus 3. And I could save myself the trouble because this is not going to get any better. I'm going to have y squared equals x plus 3 fourths. This is a parabola. You cannot have a, a x or y be to any power other than positive 1. Not a line. Sometimes they give you a function in table form. Now, when you've got a table, what you're looking for is a continuous slope. Okay, you want a constant rate of change. Constant rates of change make straight lines. Uh, you get curves when the rate of change is not constant. Okay, so what you're looking for here, look from here to here, this increases by 0.5. Okay, from here to here, this increases by 26. All right, from here to here, this increases by 0.5, but from here to here, this increases by, what is that, 16? I can't have to do math. I don't want to do math in my head. I'll screw it up for sure. And then there'll be videographic proof that I screwed up. And I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to take calculator. 46 minus 28, 19. See, I was wrong. See, <laughs> it's a good thing I checked. This went up by 19. Okay. So because this is not constant, this is not linear. These all have to be the same. This is also increasing by 0.5. This increases by 10. It's all over the place. This is not a linear graph, okay? During the first um, half second interval, the ball goes from a height of um, two feet to a height of 28 feet. That is an increase of 26 feet, so it went up by 26. During the second half interval, the ball goes from 28 feet to 46 feet which is an increase of 19 feet. Because of the change in height, um, because of the change in height over the two equivalent, varies maybe? I should have probably typed the word, it probably says varies. Because the change in height varies over the two um, equivalent intervals, the height of the soccer ball must be modeled by a curved line. Yep. It would be a straight line if this had been the same. If it had been plus 26, plus 26, plus 26, that would have given us a straight line. But it can't be jumping all over the place. That gives you a curve. All right, so here we have a couple of tables, and um, they want to know if they are linear or nonlinear. All right, so from here to here, this was an increase of 4. From here to here, this was an increase of 12. From here to here is an increase of 1. From here to here is an increase of 3. What we have to think about, though, is does an increase of 4 be, being 12, is that equivalent to an increase of 1 and an increase of 3? Well, does 4 twelfths equal 1 third? Heck, yes, it does. So um, we need to keep checking. This one is an increase of 1. This is an increase, no, it's an increase of 2, my mistake. This is an increase of 6. And guess what? 2 6 is also equal to 1 third. This is an increase of 1. This is an increase of 3. So that's 1 third. And this is an increase of 4. And this is an increase of 12. And we already determined that 4 twelfths was equal, so this is linear. This is a constant rate of change, but you have to be careful because these can jump around over here. So you got to make sure you have equivalent rates of change um, when you're doing this. What about this one? This is an increase of 1. This is a decrease of 1. This is an increase of 1. This is a decrease of 7. This is an increase of 1. This is a decrease of 19. Okay, this is not linear. This is not linear. I, I, you can just quit now. If you're thinking it's linear, you need to check them all because they can throw you a curve at the end. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> but uh, throw you a curve at the end. And, you know, it's, I'm hilarious. Um, but if you're going to go with nonlinear, all it takes is one uh, uh, rate of change to vary, and it's out. It's nonlinear. It's all or nothing. 
Okay, identify linear functions by graphing them. Well, you can also do that. You can go ahead and graph them. The easiest way to graph these is to go to the Desmos graphing calculator and put the points in and let the calculator do it for you. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way if you happen to have some good old grid paper laying around and you just like graphing, okay? Fernando uses a garden hose to fill his empty pool. The table shows the amount of water in the pool after every five minutes. Determine linearity. The amount of water in the pool increases by how many gallons during the first five minutes? It increases by five gallons. It also increases by, uh, by how many gallons during each five minute interval up to 25 minutes. All right, well here we increased, this went up by 60, this went up by 60, this goes up by 60, I'm not writing zeros, and this goes up by 60. And these are each 5, 5, 5, 5. Because this is constant, it makes a straight line. It's linear. Linear. Okay. Um, so, and sometimes we're going to have uh, information given in one of these horizontal tables. We're going to do the same thing with this that we did with the T-charts. We're going to check to see if the rate of change is the same. Okay. Um, here. Uh, coronavirus explained in craft terms. You and nine friends are crafting. One is using glitter. How many projects have glitter? <laughs> well, teachers, uh, glitter is kind of a teacher thing um, because custodians hate glitter. And if we use glitter in our classrooms, they're cleaning glitter up for for months. Um, yeah, if one person uses glitter, glitter's on everything. And uh, you'll find that out when you start going to your dances in uh, high school. You go like homecoming and your girlfriend, she's got like glitter on her dress or something. It'll be all over your car. You'll never get it out. Uh, but anyway, uh, glitter is the secret word for this video. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and finish this problem. This is the last problem in this video. Um, the table shows the federal minimum wage rates during years in which the wage increased. Which statement best describes the function that models the wages over time? Well, this was an increase here of one year. Okay, this was one year. And it went up by 45 cents. This was an increase of five years. And it went up by 50 cents. I got a bad feeling about this one. This does not appear to be linear. Increased by one increased by 40. Yeah, no, this is not linear. So which one of these best describes it? The function is linear because the, no, oh, we already decided it's not linear. The function is nonlinear because the increase is 45 cents between 90 and 91 and 70 cents between 07 and 08. We didn't even go that far. We knew it was wrong before we got there. B is the correct answer. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, the next video will be for the workbook problems, okay? I hope you had a really super great time doing discrete, continuous, or neither, and linear and nonlinear. I'll be right here, same time, same bat channel, for your next exciting episode of 3-3 Workbook Problems. Don't forget to go to McGraw-Hill and put in the word glitter.